Hello everyone and welcome back to uh, my continuing tutorial campaign series in Realistic Progression Zero, the campaign mod for the Realism Overhaul suite of Realism Mods for Kerbal Space Program. This is episode 10. Uh, in the previous episode we essentially flight proved our um, new launch vehicle which... Let's see if there's an auto save. There isn't one. Well, you can load it here. Um, this is not quite the current version of it, but it's close enough. Uh, New launch vehicle, and in this episode, uh, we put a number of satellites into orbit. Um, we have good reliability on the engines. So in this episode, we are going to go back to the moon. Uh, now, due to KSP crash, I didn't have the mission control showing when I selected the contracts, but uh, I went ahead and selected uh, another lunar flyby contract and another lunar impactor contract. Um, if What I would like to do, what I would really like to do, is go ahead and design um, a probe that can orbit the moon uh, that can nonetheless dump its transfer stage into the moon uh, and fulfill lunar orbit, lunar impact, and lunar flyby all at once. Happily, we've unlocked the stability slash early probes node, so we now finally have our first controllable probe core. It costs an awful lot of money to unlock, $20 million in 1965 dollars, but we have the money so let's go ahead and unlock it. And once unlocked, it costs quite a bit of money to actually use, but again, it's going to pay for it. Um, so let's go ahead and see what we can do. Well, we know we're going to need an antenna. Now, the downside of using this probe core is you'll note it doesn't actually have science experiments other than the basic telemetry analysis. So that means we have to basically put all our science experiments on it ourselves, which is kind of annoying. So we have to buy the Geiger counter, we have to buy the uh, micrometeorite. Um, did we actually? Well, I don't think we do because I think we already got data from that and that's not biome specific. Um, so let's go ahead and add the orbital perturbation experiment. Uh, we want actually 45 degrees. And I'm aligning it as you can see because I want its mass to basically bounce. This was the what even was this? That was the Geiger counter, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. No, that's the orbital perturbation experiment. Problem is, these things all look alike. Uh, now here's a Geiger counter. Oh, we don't actually need RCS build data at the moment. And now we have space for one more. So I think this time we'll fly the micrometeorite detector and next time we'll fly the barometer. I think we have we may have gotten both of them back because we did, in our impactor, we did get some science back from when we were about to crash. But I don't know for sure. So, let's hook this up. Nope, that's the wrong one. This is the right one. Then, science experiments on three. and analyze telemetry. Okay, and on four, let's put uh, record perturbation data because that is biome specific in space high. So while we're tootling around in high orbit of the moon, we can get that without triggering all the other experiments. Uh, and lastly, we'll set up range safety in case something goes tragically wrong. Okay, so let's call this Oh, I don't know. Um, we'll call it Lunex 1 for lunar experiments. And let's save it because as those of you who have seen a recent stream of mine saw, um, sometimes MechJeb causes me some issues and won't let me save and then I've lost all my work and it's very sad. So save early, save often. Now 
we're going to go ahead and add a hydrazine tank because we have hydrazine now. Uh, we're going to unlock the really, really tiny RCS quads. And we're going to set them to hydrazine at TL1. And let's see how much delta V we actually can get out of this. Uh, we have a fair amount of electric charge. We probably don't need quite that much electric charge. Let's just try with maybe only two kilowatt hours. And fill the rest with hydrazine. All right. So we're already up to 100 kilos. Um, and let's figure out how much delta V this is. So it's... Oh, I don't need to do that because happily um, we have MacChip installed. I'm not doing a squadcast. Uh, so it's 101 wet and 90 dry. That is not going to be very much delta V. So we are going to have to add some more here. So let's add a little itty bitty rear tank. And we can select service module. Uh, have we did we research basic construction? I think we did finally research. That's great. Uh, so let's Go ahead and fill this with hydrazine. And now we're talking. So let me break out my trusty calculator. Um, let's get the specific impulse of the RCS, which is 198. So we want 123 over 103. Wait, why is that not at 100% utilization? It's a st stupid single tank. All right, so now it's 126 over 103. That's a mass ratio of 1.223. Now we take the natural logarithm of that. We get 0.2. We multiply by the exhaust velocity, which is going to be the gravitational constant times the specific impulse. The constant is 9.80665, and the specific impulse is 198. We have 391 meters per second delta V. So that's good. Um, that is a little less than we need to capture. Um, oh, the top of that is ugly. Let's let's solve our ugliness problem. And let's go to round three. And let's extend it out a little bit extra. Now, the one thing I'm worried about here is burn time, um, because those are little itty bitty thrusters. They consume 0.0123 per second. So if we have. 42 liters of hydrazine there. We're going to temporarily ignore this. Okay, so if I'm reading this right, it would take 853 seconds to expend that hydrazine. I think that's probably too long for me to really bother with. So we're going to add some main engines. Um, in particular, let's pick the 69. OK, so we want two of these. Okay, and let's convert them to hydrazine as well. That is going to decrease our delta V because they're a little heavy, but you know, it is what it is. Um, our hard limit is 
200 kilograms. Beyond that, we can't control anything. So... Let's see. Now, there's no... The, like, we are going to be slightly less efficient than if we only had these thrusters in terms of how much delta V, because these will just add extra dry mass. Uh, remember that when I did that, that little calculation to get delta V, where I took the wet mass, the dry mass, uh, and then the specific impulse, thrust did not play any part in any of that, because uh, the rocket equation doesn't care about thrust. It cares about specific impulse, or in particular, exhaust velocity. Um, so adding these on, that's just adding extra dry mass, so we've lost some delta V. The upside is that it won't take us so long, and where that comes into play is that we will have lower gravity losses when we do our insertion burn. So, it, you know, it probably balances out to some degree, but just as with a rocket stage, um, where you're paying between steering losses and gravity losses, um, the less engine you have, the more delta V you will get, probably. So, yeah, let's... Um, let's go ahead and add a little, a little bitty, teeny tiny... decoupler. And we'll use this as, de as a decoupler. Uh, and let's see how heavy... Well, how heavy is that? Like two kilos? No, it's almost five kilograms. That's a pretty heavy decoupler when you come down to it. Uh, let's put a single baby sergeant on here. Oh, it's a heavy decoupler because it's too large. All right, and let's move these attitude jets up a little bit so they clear. All right, now that gives us 300 meters per second. So we're going to stretch this out until we're right on the the. Um, Actually, let's see what happens if we add a, another couple of these. That's too heavy. Um, what if we just had two of them? That's slightly over the limit. Um, so the total delta V... Ah, uh, and I think I may have miscalculated my total delta V before anyway, because I think I only subtracted the hydrazine from this, not including that. Uh, so let's let's extend this out until we get to 200 even. Oh, right, I forgot that the attitude jets were <laughs> part of... were attached to the probe core. Um... One ninety nine. Okay. This is where it would be really nice to have an altair, um, but we don't have basic solids unlocked yet, so we don't have it. That's life. Let's calculate our delta v again. Ah, uh, hang on. Let's first check two seventy one on top of whatever this is. So, this is 169, and what is it dry? 99. So, 169 over 99, mass ratio of 1.71, take the natural logarithm. Okay, that's 1038 meters per second delta V. That is more than enough to insert into lunar orbit and even do some various things. We really only need about uh, probably 400 to capture if we have a close approach. We need probably 900 to circularize in low lunar orbit. Um, 
So that gives us some extra. And then we'll go ahead and let this um, help us out further. Uh, I'm actually so. So actually, I am now tempted um, to just to entirely do the lunar orbit insertion with the probe core and use this just for TLI. Um, because. Uh, it would be hard to partially burn and then still get yeah we can't we can't do our trick of letting the kick stage impact if it's the kick stage that uh happens to insert us into orbit so yeah let's we're we're going to extend this on out uh to a full 200 kilograms shrink that a little we we want to undercut it ever so slightly um come on. Uh oh, I know what I can do. Yeah. Okay. Now, we of course can't quite do that because what I forgot to add already is solar panels. We kind of want this thing to actually stay alive, you know? Uh, so... We're going to add a pair of solar panels. And I think actually we do want them long ways. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Okay. Um, okay. So that RCS jet will fire in the gap between the solar panel and the and the tankage. Um, we are now, of course, slightly over 200. So let's go back a little bit. 199. Right. All right. Now let's just verify we have enough electricity from these things. Uh, where is our little basic solar panel? It provides 12.6 watts. Now, the antenna, because it's remote tech, it doesn't, it uses, let's move the avionics warning over, 0 0.09 a minute. So that's 1.5 watts. Uh, the probe core uses, oh, it can be disabled to lower command module wattage down to one watt so yeah I, th I one solar panel will just be enough okay so let's go ahead and, and construct our translunar injection stage come on stop bouncing there okay we can even move these in slightly Uh, and we should also, I guess, compute how long this will take to finish up. Uh, so we have 85. And the burn rate is uh, 0.0307 times 2 plus... .0123 times 4 is 0.1106. Now we divide 85 by that, which is about what it was, 768 seconds. So rather longer than, what is that, 11, 12, almost 13 minutes. That's a fairly long burn time. Um, so, Yeah. Uh, I think I may go up to four of these fellers just to make our lives a little easier. We have excess delta V, so it doesn't actually matter. And I think I may also lower that battery 
to only 3600. So quick note, electric charge here. Electric charge is, is effectively kilojoules. Um, so 7200 of them means 7200 kilojoules or 7.2 megajoules. Now watts are a joule per second. So if this probe core is using one watt, that means it is using one thousandth of one of these per second. So if we have 3600 of them, which is a kilowatt hour, aka if you drew a kilowatt from the battery for an hour, that would drain the battery. Um, and we had, what did we have? Point. So we had 1.5 watts from the antenna. Uh, and I got that because this says 0 0.09 a minute. So you divide 0 0.09 by 60 and you get 0 0.0015. And 0 0.0015 kilowatts is 1.5 watts. OK, and then the probe core, when not active, is 1 watt. So we're looking at a total draw of 2.5 watts. Uh, so 3,600 times 1,000 to get into watt hours divided by 2.5 is 1.44 million seconds. So that's quite a while. I think our batteries will be OK. Um, so right, let's go ahead and get more of these things. Four of them. Again, we will have to shrink our tank slightly. Oh, no, we actually don't because um, because we re removed some electric charge, so we're actually lighter now. So in fact, we can grow our tank slightly, which is great. Uh, so we definitely made up for the increase in thrusters by um, getting rid of that excess battery capacity. Now we're going to go into the activate the actuation toggles. Uh, we're going to turn off everything except translate fore aft. And we're going to turn on four by throttle. And we're going to turn on always full action. Because they're effectively engines now, not RCS thrusters. Uh, the last thing we're going to do with this little feller is go ahead and lock its tanks so that when we have RCS on on our transfer stage we won't be wasting the hydrazine on this. Alright, now let's go ahead and go back and put this back on. Oh come on, don't freak out. There. Okay, so now we need 3150, 3180, 3180 meters per second. That is not going to achieve 3180 meters per second, that is for sure. Uh, so we're going to need two stages worth of these things. Mm, that one, and we'll do We'll temporarily offset this. Whoops! Temporarily offset these up so that we can attach this successfully. And then we will proceed to make a second stage worth of these things. Um, and I think we want next to no impulse whatsoever because we don't want to mess around with it messing up our delta v beyond what we've calculated. Move these back down. There we go. Now, we'll add a second stage. Of nine of them. 
that is still nowhere near what we need for TLI. Uh, I think we probably will have to reconsider whether this is something we can loft with that very simple launch vehicle that we have. Um, we could go ahead and try making this lighter, but it's unlikely that we would really be able to insert into lunar orbit um, in a way that... What it, let, let's check exactly what the contract requirements are. Oh, we haven't even picked the... We haven't picked the lunar orbit contract yet. Let's go ahead and go out and do that. Lunar orbit. Uh, periapsis between... Okay, so it doesn't even have an ap apocelene requirement. It just has a pericelene. So we just have to capture. We don't have to get into like low lunar orbit circularized as some of the other contracts might require. So that means that we have a much lower delta V requirement on this probe. So we're going to put that aside for now and let's see how much delta V we get from a much shrunken. Uh, wet is Wet is 148, and dry is 91. Let's try that. That's still 944. We can shrink it even further. We really only need about 600, 650 meters per second, I would estimate. which means we can go back to only two of these, which will also decrease our dry mass. Which is always nice. Uh, so now we're at 122. No, sorry, let's go back up on this as well. We are at 136. Over, 80, over 87. Six over eighty-seven. Take the natural log uh, times nine point eight zero six six five times one point nine eight. That's eight sixty-seven. So still high. Now this would probably be faster if I just ran the rocket equation in reverse and took the the um, yeah. But this this will work fine. This is now. Let's try shrinking it down to 150 millimeters here. 121 over 86. Six sixty-two. All right, that sounds about right to me. Let's see if we can get away with launching this thing on our small probe. Uh, and for solar panels we will have to um, put them on the long way. And I think like that and let the RCS run around them. And let's Whoops. Ah. Put them back. We are now in offset mode. Let's move them in a little bit. Okay. All right. Now, let's see how this... Ah, let's fill up our tanks first. Um... And the question is, the 
baby sergeant has what specific impulse? It has the specific impulse 235. So it will actually be better, I believe, if we go ahead and have one of these as an insertion motor. Okay. Three sixty eight. Or actually not an insertion motor. We don't have to worry about that. We just have to provide final boost. Um so yeah, let's get rid of this which is now unneeded. Now happily, um Right now we're st we're on only 150. That means that the final 368 meters per second of our lunar transfer we can do with guidance. Ah, so we'll go ahead and put that to Kepler on, and we'll go ahead and put some more baby sergeants here. Ah. Uh, I think we want four. Um, yeah, okay. That gets us up to 1301. Now we're going to need quite a bucket. smaller. Okay. And baby sergeant. Now we want, I believe, let's try 12 on the 45s. Okay. And local, and let's move these out so that they pass by the others. All right, we are up to twenty seven sixty nine. Now, that is not quite enough for TLI, and I think the sad realization that I'm coming to is that making a craft that is capable of lunar orbital insertion with a 60 kilogram dry mass is really more than we can ask of the launch vehicle we have. Um, so I think we'll probably have to just go with an impactor uh, and fly by again because yeah, this is just not going to... <laughs> we're going to need more than what we have to do this transfer. Um, other options we can look at, we can... Um, oh, we could use the XASR, which has about the same specific impulse as the Baby Sergeant, but it will have a better propellant mass fraction, because we have service modules now. Um, that is how much is how much is that going to cost? Let's let's find out. No, I don't want fifty million of them. Let's kill that. It's probably.
probably dirt cheap. It's dirt cheap. 600 funds. Alright. What is our data? Uh, yeah, so the bug that I encountered last time with research means that I believe that the text transfer will not, will like, override the research, so I don't think there's actually any point to doing research on this. Um, but Agathorn can later correct me if I'm wrong here. Um, so I think what we're going to do is... Let's go ahead and, and try doing it this way. We haven't we haven't done a liquid liquid spin spin stabilized stage yet, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, that's a decent texture for it. Uh, we want fill cylinder. Uh, we don't want it filleted quite that much. Okay, and we want its type to be service module, and this is in XASR mode, right? Let's find out. Yes, it is. All right, so let's fill it up. Now, happily, its burn time is longer than the one minute five seconds, so we can stretch this quite a bit. and make it a little wider. And shrink it a little bit, so one minute, five seconds. Okay, now happily, I think, if we make it empty, yes, we are in luck. Uh, we are under the limit, which means that once this thing Once this thing burns out, we'll be able to control it all. So I think what that actually means is that we're going to want two of these fillers so that we can really get our full... No, we don't want... Come on. Two. We only want two. On 90 degrees. All right. And stretch it out a little more again so we get up to... Yeah. All right. So this is TLI and guidance. And, and if we move it all down to nothing, we still are under the limits. So we'll be able to control it once it burns out, which is great. Um, I think I want to stretch it a little bit more, actually. One about 30... Whoa, no. No, no, no. What about 3250, I think, for a transfer? Well, 3212 is enough. Um, move you guys out and up. And let's verify one more time. 189. Perfection. All right. Okay, so the current state of things, I actually did have a chance to check with Agathorn, is that you can do one flight to lock in your text transfer and then do R&D, and the R&D should apply. Although, uh, but I, I think the, if, you're, if the text transfer is more than 2,500, which is the R&D limit, I, I don't know whether R&D will actually do anything or not, but we'll see. Um, the downside, of course, is that we're now back to almost a ton, which means we need a launch vehicle that can get 761 kilograms into orbit. So we're back right where we started, where it doesn't look likely that we can actually do this um, with the launch vehicle we have. So I think instead of getting this back to the moon, we're going to have to design a new launch vehicle. Uh, that's fine. I kind of expected we would have to do that. Uh, we have to, We certainly have to do it anyway, because um, 
We're also going to need a new launch vehicle to get a capsule onto orbit. That's for sure. And we're going to need a new launch vehicle uh, to probably need a new launch vehicle to send up um, a recoverable film camera. Um, so for those reasons, we are going to have to shelve this design. Thankfully, we have a year to complete that contract. So that's all right. Um, so we're going to shelve this design for now. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and design a new launch vehicle. Um, so. We're just going to put that there. It's 0.14 kilograms. And then we're going to go ahead and put a proc tank on, fill it with some lead ballast do all the usual things. All right. So, yeah, um, we basically, we have, a, we have a question before us. And that question is, do we want just sort of the minimum launch vehicle to actually do this, which we could put like a two-ton capsule into, up to, well, two tons a bit optimistic. Um, we could put Mercury into orbit with a two LR-79 first stage and then an LR-105 upper stage. Um, but I think rather than having that rocket, which we really won't use much, we might as well just jump ahead and use three LR-79s in the first stage and get a full 3.6 or so tons into orbit or more if we decide to use balloon tanks. Um, so let's go ahead and, and set this up at, whoa, we don't want that. We want 3.6 tons. Okay. Now let's go ahead and add uh, a fairing base. Uh, and then we want our top dome fuel tank. And in fact, I think rather, I think let's 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 be even faster than we otherwise might be. Let's go ahead and grab our Scorpion B subassembly because most of the work will already have been done. We just need to change everything size, essentially, and we need to change the avionics here. We want the one meter guidance unit. Um, we want this to be, I think I'm going to go with the three LR-79 lower stage and one LR-105 upper stage. So we'll do a, we'll use the same, basically we'll use the same diameter tank for this up as our upper stage on this new launch vehicle. Uh, and I'm not going to do anything funky like Atlas staging where it drops engines on the way up. I'm just going to design a traditional two-stage launch vehicle. Now, the nice thing about making it also at this size is our old Scorpion upper stage. We can then go ahead and use it as a third stage for translunar injection. So, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Um, these retros... Ah, uh, come on. Let me zoom in enough to get at the retros. Because we know we're probably going to use a third stage on it at times, I'm not going to have the retros in that uh, fairing base. Let's go back to tank type default. The bottom is going to be about 2.3 meters. This also goes to tank type default. 2.5 meters. Uh, let's get rid of this for now. Uh, we're not going to need RCS.
this finally goes also to round one and back two meters a bit more actually 2.2 meters this is 2.5 we're going to extend this a bit and yeah that's fair enough let's extend this dome some temporarily put the fairing side back on just so we can see um, okay and that's got too big a base that's better um, okay this needs to get extended a little bit the bottom dome now we get to research a new engine we're gonna grab the LR 105 series that was the sustainer on the Atlas um, but it also works great as an upper stage for us can burn up to five minutes and 30 seconds we're probably not going to use that much we'll use either four minutes or four minutes and 30 seconds depending on how the bottom stage shakes out because I've done some stuff like this so let's first see well that's an interest that's interesting auto staging on KSP's part uh, let's fill it on up three minutes and 30 seconds so we're going to need a taller stage. And it's vaguely tempting just to make the upper stage 3 meter, you know, average 10 foot stage. But since the bottom is going to be not 3 meter, the bottom is probably is going to be uh, 3.6 meters, I think. Um, not much point in doing that. Um, so, yeah, we can pump up the utilization a bit more because our tank domes are taking the part of so we really only have the the intertank here and let's we want double uh, what's a nice look for the double tank that's decent um, and let's move this up a little bit so it's not quite hanging around okay so that ring is now kind of in the stage. Uh, now, what we need is some roll control for the stage. And instead of RCS roll control, we'll have a single vernier. Now, the interesting thing to note here, of course, is that we'd be unbalanced <laughs> with a single vernier. But that's OK, uh, because happily, everything gimbals. So we're just going to add it about there. Uh, no, that's too much bank or pitch. All right, so it's going to be out a little bit. Um, there. Okay. So it's going to be firing kind of through the center of mass of that stage. Uh, now we can go ahead and stretch this out even more. And I think we were talking about 4 minutes and 30 seconds. So let's do that. Uh, now we have to call it something. I guess we'll call it the catapult going along with the the um, siege weapon kind of stuff that I've been doing. Um, and let's see, is that actually through the center of mass? Let's, we have our CS build aid. Let's take a peek. Um, so we'll have 0.135 kilonewton meters. Um, if we shut this off, it doesn't actually change because that was aligned with the center of mass very nearly. Uh, so let's try moving this. Oops, no, we don't want it snapping. That's interesting. Ah, RCS build aid is seeing it's on a different stage, so it wouldn't actually do anything. Um, all right, so that's actually quite close to no 
That's firing through the... Yeah. I think actually we'll accept a little pitch moment so that we don't have to be gimbaled quite so badly. So let's try that. Um, because it is worth noting... Let's try that. Uh, it is worth noting that that Vernier engine is going to spool up faster than this main engine. Um, so at stage separation, uh, there will be a slight... Um, a slight pitch moment going on from that. But once underway, then everything will give a fine. Although, since we're under MechJeb control, even at stage separation, there really shouldn't be much in the way of a pitch moment because uh, this thing will be gimbaled. And it does have a lot of gimbal, does it ever? How much gimbal does this have? This has... Vectoring range 35 degrees. I would say that that is a lot of gimbal. Um, so we'll be fine. Uh, let's turn our CS build aid back off. Now, we need to stretch this back out to get back to 4 minutes 30. Bingo. Okay, now we can worry about the lower stage. Lower stage... Um, we're going to need a bigger guidance unit. That's part one. Ah... Uh, we're going to have to unlock the 3 meter guidance unit because we're definitely going to be more than 100 and what was this 130 tons and 45 tons is 175 tons I'm pretty sure we'll be more than even that so yeah we're going to go big and I am fairly sure that this rocket will be unnaturally tall if we do a 3 meter core stage, so we're going to do a 3.6 meter bottom for stage. Uh, and let's fix the extra height on these. Uh, okay. Now, before we leave this stage, we remember we said we were going to have to add some retros. So let's add some retros. Dry, it's going to be, uh, let's see, how much is it going to mass dry? And remember, we subtract 3.6 tons, 5.6 tons, so 2 tons dry. So, the question is, do we need 2 of these, or do we need more than 2 of these? Uh, and I think we actually probably only really need two of these. It's just not... We don't need that much in the way of retro. It's mostly just to clear the payload rather than to actually try to deorbit it, which is crazy expensive. Alright, so two of those. We also need ullage motors. Um, now, tragically... Uh, this will impact our delta V considerably. Takes us down to 56.42 from 57.13. So almost 50 meters per second to pay for adding those ullage motors, although we get some of that back because they're going to fire first. Uh, let's make them fire slowly. Uh, yeah, that only gives us 0.2 Gs. Uh, these things we also want to fire at about half thrust. So they have a couple seconds of retro kick. Uh, okay, now back to the first stage. Put that on. Extend the height a little bit. Put our guidance unit on. Let's size up the first stage. Okay, so the maximum we can do is 4.6 meters. Happily, we don't need anything that big. We're just going to do 3.6 meters. Now, I'm doing 3.6 meters because I'm essentially designing a 12-foot stage. Um, and that's 3.6576 meters. 
but I'm just rounding 3.6 because this tutorial I'm not actually trying to make replicas or I mean if I were really doing a US campaign I would do stuff in <laughs> in Imperial um, and then care more about the conversion okay so let's go ahead and move this on up That looks decent. And it looks actually like we need to flatten it out a little bit. Oh, isn't that nice? Uh, it actually lines up when snaps on. That's cool. I'll accept it. All right. So now we have to deal with the bottom of this thing. We no longer need verniers on the first stage because we know we have a second stage, so we don't have to worry about final post-boost control, and because we'll have more than one engine on the first stage, so we don't need verniers for roll control. So, 3.6, 3.6, and... three of you. Plop this back. Uh, move these in so they're no longer clipping. And a little bit extra so that there's... Well, no, actually that is there is clearance there. That's cool. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and now add the fairing sides back on up here. And look at when they decouple. They of course decouple on the wrong stage. We'll plop them up here. Now where are th those retros are in the correct stage. Uh, these are in the correct stage. This, uh, I think we're going to use structural sides now. We don't have to worry about them decoupling madly. And next texture twice. Got that nice stringer texture. Um, what's this? Why did the... Oh, I dragged the wrong thing up there. That's why. That, would, that explains a lot. Um, and... Let's add some retros to the first stage. Four of you. Or actually three. Let's do three because we have three engines. Why not? And let's increase the thrust up to 80% so it gives a nice immediate retro kick away from the upper stage so it doesn't get blown up. And let's check. We need definitely need to stretch this tank. First let's remove and re-add. Uh, LR79. Which one are you? That. Okay. And... 79. All right, now let's go ahead and stretch the stage out to until we get 1.2 liftoff thrust weight ratio. Okay, so yeah, so we're a little lower liftoff thrust weight ratio than we'd like. Um, And we're getting 9232 meters per second out of it to get 3.6 tons into orbit. And that should be enough to get 3.6 tons into orbit. Um, 
In fact, I'm fairly sure it is because I've designed a similar rocket, and that's about what I got into orbit, although that had a slightly stretched lower stage and a slightly shorter upper stage. But let's, yeah, let's try tweaking a little bit. We want total mass 171.4. So let's try going 10 seconds back, well, 15 seconds back, 20 seconds back on this, 174. Uh, and we want to stretch this a bit. Oops, what did I say? 172 point? Yeah, it's about there. All right, 92 point two. So we've lost some. That is a shame. Um, let's go back up to 430. Um, then, also, we actually we can raise this utilization because we're now at a nominal stage length. up to 9240. Okay, that is acceptable. Um, now, if we really wanted to up our payload into orbit, um, then we could switch this to balloon tanks, and we could do rather better. Um, 93 looks a bit optimistic for that. I think let's try 91. All right, um, so yeah, that's a decent launch vehicle. Um, 102 funds for the dummy payload. So $5 million to get 3.6 tons into orbit, which is decent, decent, decent. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's that launch vehicle set. Now the nice thing is, if we then go ahead and we can swap this out yeah so let's let's first subassembly this so we have it um, So now we can go ahead and pop this out. Ugh. Uh, <laughs> well, we can pop both of those out. So that actually does make it a little harder to switch, but we'll survive. Um, no, I don't want that. I want this. Yes. Uh, And the guidance unit is there. Now, actually, we want to toss this and get it from here because I want the stages to be set the way they are. Let's get rid of that. All right. And we're going to need a higher, I think. Yeah. Move this up. Zoom in so we can really tune it. Come on. There we go. Okie dokie. And how does that... That's plenty of clearance. Okay. Now let's see... Just how much we can toss TLI. Something about like that, I believe. 3200... No. No, it needs to be a li we need to be up to 12,400. Um, ah, but the staging is messed up, I bet. Okie dokie. And we'll decouple the fairings on second stage ignition. That'll help as well. 
And finally, let's see what shrinking this might do. It's at 1.63 meters. OK, so we do a little better if we shrink it. But, you know, that's we're close enough. Um, so we still need to decrease the mass of this a little bit. See if that gives us 12,400. Oh, easily. Let's go back up a little. All right, uh, that's a little under one I would like, but basically that's 500 kilograms TLI. Okay, so this this is the sort of rocket that would actually let us put um, that lunar thing we designed earlier on a translunar trajectory. Because happily this AJ-10 can reignite, we spend about 550 meters per second on this stage getting us into orbit, and then we spend the remainder uh, for TLI. Um, in fact, it is just possible that we could do um, a lunar flyby biosample film return camera mission. We, can't, we couldn't do an orbital one. I think we probably need about 0.8 tons TLI to do that. Uh, but then we, I mean, we'll get a new node before too long, upgrade this launch vehicle. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and um, I think, I guess to s uh, we need, we definitely want to research this thing. Yeah, always whenever I do R&D the first time, it's not, it, nope, come on, there we go. I hate how it does that. Um, so, we'll get 87.8 data, 2500 divided by 73.23, it's 34 days. It will take us 85 days to build this with our current stuff. So, we actually don't have... We actually don't have that much time to fulfill those contracts. We might actually have to, meanwhile, do a a regular lunar impactor um, while we're teching up on this launch vehicle. Um, I mean, really, unless we fly it once and then the next time we fly it for reals, which I think we actually probably can do, given how reliable these things are. Um, All right, so that, we only need to hire the basic team. Um, everything else we've already tested on the prior thing. And yeah, so we'll do one of these launches. Uh, to verify, to verify that upper stage, hopefully we only need to do one. We might have to do two. Then we'll fly the real mission, and that'll still give us another uh, 100 days to build and fly a backup to complete that mission. So yeah, let's let's queue up uh, Catapult BD for booster development. Build two of them. Okay, we're going to go ahead and scrap the backup warbler from the last episode. Uh, so, let's go ahead and warp to this. Takes three whole days to roll out to the pad. That's impressive. Um, we also probably need to consider buying a couple upgrades to make the VAB run a little faster.
Okay, and we still have tons of stuff under research. We do have 28.2 science. Maybe we can spend that on something. Uh, 30, 60, 30, 40. Nope, we need some more science. So we'll warp to when it's rolled out. Then we'll go ahead and warp to the morning. And lastly, we'll go ahead and launch it. Okay, so we're a little higher than I would have liked, which also means our launch clamp is a little higher than I would have liked. Uh, so let's figure out what do we actually want for our ascent. Um, is that right? I guess that's about right. So far, so good. I'm gradually refining what I expect my launch parameters to be for the real launch. Um, Coming up on Miko. Miko. Ullage motor ignition and lighting the second stage. And yep, we kept that pitch moment to a minimum. Now, we'll pitch up to stay 
align with prograde. Minimize our steering losses. Okay, next stage will be fairings, which will drop at the Carmen line as usual. And fairing step. I think I might have not boosted quite enough on the first stage, but live and learn. So let's let's point a little bit above prograde now. I want to stretch out that time to apogee. I'd love to have a lower thrust vernier because we really don't need even one of them, let alone two of them, for this engine alone. But... Yeah, we've lofted quite low. We're going to pick up a lot of steering losses. That's kind of tragic. We will have fairly low gravity losses for this ascent, however. If we're lucky, at some point, this will start going back up a little bit. I'd really like a higher perigee than 150 kilometers. Yeah, now we're building up the steering losses. I guess we can pitch down a little bit now. Start to minimize steering losses again. Let this start to come down a little bit. Getting there. 5.2 kilometers per second orbital speed. Watch that coming right down. Let's pitch up a little more. Okay, now time to Apogee's rising, so we can start start down pitching a bit. Okay inching closer to burnout. And we have burnout, SEP, ignition. Okay, and we got up to 3028 delta V, which is pretty, not delta V, data units, which is good. Um, I 
Oh, that stupid wobble. So annoying. Ah, well. Ah, uh, we picked up a little negative vertical speed because we passed Apogee, so let's kill that off. Hit Cirque. Okay. Leaving 3237 Delta V in the stage, which is great. That will be enough for our transfer. Uh, 1500 meters per second gravity losses. 9000 meters per second Delta V expended. Which means, given that I budgeted... Uh... 9200 vacuum is probably going to be so I probably back budgeted about right. Um, okay, so that was a complete success, which I totally did not expect. Um, I really expected something to fail the first flight, which is why we were doing the booster development flight. Um, but hey, it did not. So, what do you say we just go ahead and use this to fulfill those contracts? Because why not? So, uh, what do you say we don't because we did not launch aligned with the moon? <laughs> uh, I mean, we could put this on a, uh, admittedly we could, for example, burn such that our apogee is at lunar height and wait for it to hit the moon, but eh, it's not really worth it. We'll take care to launch into the plane of the moon for the next booster development flight. Um, meanwhile, let's just verify that this starts up correctly. So, Elwich and light. And we're going to burn uh, highly radial as well to lower our perigee so this burns up on, our, on the next flight, on, on the next loop around. we doing on data? Almost three quarters full on data. So yeah, we'll let the stage burn out. is low enough that we should disappear on the next pass so we don't have to call range safety on this. It's 
align down with the velocity. Oops. No, we want to keep the perigee about 40 kilometers. probably get away with reducing the hydrazine as well, which would increase delta V. And we can also switch these to service module tanks, which would increase delta V. But I th we verified this stage, so I would rather not mess with it. Okay, so that was a successful booster development flight. So... We will go ahead and... Uh, let's... Go ahead and scrap that. And then save this as a subassembly because it worked just fine. Um, That's 500 Q GTLI. Um, oh, that's apparently the, the many characters I can so I can put in the description. Well, that's a shame. Um, so let's open our little probe again, little probe that could. Uh, it doesn't need a TLI stage, that's for sure. Uh, what would be useful, however, it's interesting, something locked. try you again. Nope. Not actually letting me click anything. So we'll pop out and pop back in. We did scrap that, didn't we? Yeah. There's some kind of issue here. Ah, it was an input lock being mistakenly left assigned. So yeah, let's actually, let's see if we did our insertion this way. Whoops, wrong way. Nah. Oh, 
Okay, actually that is a fairly successful thing. We can just bring this along as a um yeah. Yep. So we'll just bring this along actually as an insert as a lunar orbit insertion stage. Um So, and we can we'll still stay under the limit. That will be much much faster than if we did it all in hydrazine. So, I like this idea. I think. Um, and even if for some reason this fails, we can still do lunar insertion on hydrazine. Um, only has to last for ten seconds. It's not like it's the worst thing in the world. Um. And in total, we're much less than the 500 kilos required for TLI. So we have plenty of headroom on this thing. Um, we need to make this a little taller. No, 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 no. Let's do it this way. There we go. All right, so... Successful launch vehicle. All right, so we'll build two of these. Does cost a pretty penny, I must say, but it will do the job with lots of overcapacity. All right, so what else could we do? Well, we're certainly going to go higher than that, so we might as well pick this up. Science data from space around the moon? Well, we're definitely doing that. We might as well pick that up. So, yeah, let's go ahead and warp until that's ready. And roll it out. And launch it. Okay. Ah, uh, what I did not check was the boil off that affected this upper stage, but I don't think it materially affects it that much. We'll we'll see. quite f not aligned, but going to be aligned eventually. Uh, and I think 1.5 is a decent plane to align with. It's a day launch. 
How nice. Off we go. And for Schnobs' trick, we're going to go a little bit south. back in a line. Actually looks like a traditional conception of a launch vehicle. <laughs> Did not expect it to look to, to come out looking pretty decent like that. Um, all right, now let's go ahead and realign some. Stage ignition. And we'll up pitch a bit. Fairing sep. Let's pitch up a bit more.
Okay, because we're pushing much less payload this time, we're going to end up at a higher apogee, that's fine. More thrust weight ratio early. Gravity losses should also be better than last time by a bit. Okay, we've reached increasing time to apogee. Okay, lowering a pitch again. Yeah, that's coming out better gravity losses, I think, than last time, although I didn't quite pay attention. Coming up on burnout. And that was interesting. We'll be right back, folks. It's the first time I've literally the first time ever I've had an in flight crash.
So it's just that, well, as well, that KSP had a little hiccup because I'm fairly sure I forgot to actually take the lunar orbit contract. Yeah, I I did. There we are. Okay, let's try this again. Launch plane of target. Three seconds to ignition, one second. Off we go. And launch. So we're going to fly just a hair south again. sharply.
Okay, now we can come back on nominal heading. Back to our nominal eastward dazimuth. And sept and ignition. And pitch back up to a line. And let's try pitching a bit north as well. Sorry, yawing, I guess, in this case. Fairing sep, we can maybe pitch down. Did we have a performance loss in the first stage? Oh, yeah, we did. Ha. Huh. Okay, well, that explains why we're doing as badly as we are, and I didn't even notice. Good that Mechjeb held it steady. So we've got to pitch up a lot on the stage. This mission is probably going to be a scrub, but we'll find we'll find out. We'll see if we can just barely manage to finish TLI with the onboard thing and then capture. Yeah, but we're going to have to pitch up pretty brutally. Fairing set. Yeah, we'll get a fair amount of steering losses. I mean, we do have that extra 834 meters per second, which we can use to complete a TLI. Um, so the question is whether we lost more than that on the first stage or not. We're also going for literally the most minimal parking orbit possible. Quick, naive calculation shows that we probably will still have enough delta V to do this if we include that in our TLI. And that's fine, because we have... We can capture into lunar orbit just with the hydrazine. What mostly matters is that we maintain our time to apogee and we actually get out of the atmosphere. Yeah, we're going to need like two plus minute burn on the next stage, so we want a f significant time to apogee. Whoops, and I didn't notice our relative inclination getting all wonky, so let's fix that. South a little bit more. Set. 
set up an ignition. And let's see how this works. So we need to spend about a kilometer per second of delta V. We've gained 200 meters per second more gravity losses than we had last time from the worst ascent. So therefore, we're going to have to spend another 200 meters per second on this stage, at least. Not counting the added steering losses, so 300 meters per second. So yeah, we're, this is going to be interesting. Um, also going to have to pitch down a little bit. Uh, and come right a little bit more. Lower that relative inclination. Yeah, this, I also, I pitched that second stage. I, we didn't lose quite as much performance as I thought we did, so I pitched that second stage too high, so our time to apogee is running away with itself, which is not awesome. Antenna out. Okay, and we're going to come right a lot more. Okay, and now we're going to coast to Apogee and watch those gravity losses mount. Now this is very interesting. It's looking like um, we might just have enough delta V to do this. Um, the hydrazine may be enough to give us an intercept. Let's see what happens if we how much is that going to cost 3255 right and the problem is that we're actually going to have to circularize first so we don't hit the atmosphere our rotation. Okay. Okay, we're nearly at Apogee. Okay, let's ullage our engine a bit. burn off some of this to maximize the delta V that we'll have available. 10 seconds. Fire it up.
and that's good enough. Yeah, so we're short, tragically, only a little bit. Um, so... Thirty-one, thirty-eight. We have thirty-one, eleven. We might be able to finish the TLI ion hydrazine. Let's see. Is that an impact trajectory? Yes, it is. So we can go ahead and remove a few meters per second off of it. I think we want to be about there. And let's align. Interesting that what failed was not, in fact, the new engine, but the old engine that we'd launched a bunch of times before. But how it goes. OK, we'll execute this node. Hope that we will have coverage. Oh, goody. It's actually right over Mexico. Okay, we'll burn some of the hydrazine. fire up the engine. And we'll keep expending hydrazine during the burn. I think we might just be able to make it on this burn alone. So I'll go ahead and turn off the hydrazine burning. So, looks like we made that. Just barely, but we made it. OK, 
Okay, and we are, we do not have an impact trajectory because we overburned a little bit. All right, now we're back to having And lastly, we'll go forward just a hair to refine. Because we want about an 80 kilometer perigee, perisaline. Sorry, not perigee. Okay. Looking good. So. Let's go ahead and decouple. We're not going to fire the retros because we want that thing to end up. Uh, we now have, yeah. Uh, oh, right. Sorry. What am I doing? We do want to impact with this thing. Okay. Now we go ahead and unlock these tanks. And we slowly drift away because we're going to fire a little bit retro. Okay. Because we're going to want, again, that sub 80. Good enough. Okay, we are officially on track to reach the moon. Um, So now we just have to swap back to the other stage. Um, so this is, let's set up an alarm for this. SOI, change. Swap to this. All right, so the probe is a few minutes before. All right, so let's... warp until it comes in. Hopefully it should retain its impact trajectory. 
Then there's nine, eight, seven. Definitely still on an impact trajectory. Now I'll switch back to this. Go through its SOI change. Still at 81 kilometers. All right, so we want to, let's create Let's circularize at the next periapsis. What does that cost? 793. We have 835, so we'll have to burn backwards a little bit. <laughs> or cut off that thing early, which is probably smarter. Well, no, we'll burn backwards a little bit um, so that that also impacts the moon. That's cool. That's cool. Um, add that alarm. Now let's switch back to the probe and see how long until its impact is. All right, so a good 15 minutes before the other thing gets here. So let's warp to here. and perform our lunar impact. Hundred kilometers. an earth-shattering kaboom. Lunar impactor uncrewed. Great. Now let's switch to where might it be? There it is. Jump to ship and restore maneuver node. Okay, we don't need this anymore. And upload some data. That should give us the flyby contract. And now we just have to reach lunar orbit. And let's see if there's anything else of note in that. There's not. Okay. So, Lunar Seas. How are we doing for spin? Um, stable enough. Okay, let's get near the node. It's a 10 second burn. Warp to the maneuver. And happily, it's even on the near side of the moon, so we'll have a connection. Okay, 
let's line up for retrofire. Still over the lunar seas. So we slowly pivot around. Ullage. Okay. That was a success. Oops. All right. Let's spin ourselves around so we can decouple this. Okay. And we need to raise our periceline so it's above the surface. That's good enough. Now, what science might we have here? We're in, we're in the moon's lowlands. That's cool. And we should have completed both of those contracts, and we did. Lunar flyby, uncrewed. Space around the moon. Now, why did we not complete lunar orbit? That's interesting to me. We also didn't complete reach 5,000 kilometers with a sounding rocket. That's weird. Oh, because we were on the pad when I accepted them, so it didn't count as launch a new vessel. Launch a new vessel has to actually go to the pad, I guess. But it has to not be on the pad before you actually go out of pre-launch. Uh, so that's annoying. But we wanted to launch a second one of these anyway, so we'll just do that. Um, but we will do that in the next episode because it's time for me to go to bed. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. Uh, and stay tuned for the next episode when we'll probably be doing a bit more of this and maybe proofing out that launch vehicle a bit more. So thanks, and cheers. Bye.